to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, I'm the editor of WebPixel, um, and we'd like to thank Nauticam very much for sponsoring this episode. Nauticam produce a, a range of housings, ports, and accessories um, for a wide variety of cameras, so please head on over to nauticam.com and check out what they do. I'm also very pleased to be joined by my our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. <laughs> hey, Adam. Nice to be here. And uh, you've already given me a heads up what we're talking about today, so I've come <laughs> ahead. Um, I think I can be, um, with my T-shirt and this, maybe I can be... Um, oh, pretty, Monsieur pretty. Mustard Mouta. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bonjour, yeah. Adam. I'm not going to say I... anything. I'm not going to say anything about garlic, onions, and bicycles. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I need a, maybe I can draw a pencil moustache and absolutely. complete the look. I think Gosh, that, after, um, that caught me by surprise. Um, splendid. Um, bonjour, Alex. Bonjour. <laughs> um, so, um, one of the things that um, we sometimes get asked, or Alex sometimes get asked when we're um, on workshops and, and such like, and sometimes by email as well, is, um, well, it's often phrased as a question, um, and it's, it's help, Alex, I've scratched my glass dome, what do I do? So, what should we do, Alex? Well, I think, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I, I suspect not that many people are going to watch this video the, the day it, it goes out today, <laughs> yeah. um, but I do think people will probably come back and watch this video in the future, particularly when they have that, oh my goodness, I've scratched my dome port question. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that for anyone who's not watching it at that moment of crisis, um, first of all, if it is that moment of crisis, you know, relax. It's not the end of the world. These things are expensive. A scratch in your dome port does not stop you taking photos. So it's not the end of your trip. Um, you just might have to deal with some issues. Um, but before that, I think by far the, the best cure is some really good prevention. And yeah. that's why I've got my hat here. Um, because I think one of the most important things we can do as underwater photographers, if we are shooting with large, delicate, easily scratched things like dome ports, is to make sure we protect them as much of the time that we can. Yeah. And I would say that at least half the scratches that I see being caused on dome ports do not happen underwater. Yeah. And therefore, there's really no excuse for those to happen if we have good prevention in, in place. Now, yeah. of course, accidents happen. And I know myself that I've scratched at least two dome ports on a boat. So I'm not saying that we don't make these mistakes. However, they should be avoidable if we have a good routine in place to cover them up. So yeah. that starts by having a good dome port cover. Yeah. Dome port covers can either be um, neoprene ones like this one, yeah. um, or they can be hard ones. Yeah. Um, but having, but using them and remembering to use them. I know a lot of photographers they'll actually go in the water with, with the dome port cover on. And then once they're down underwater a little bit, they might just put, pull it up their arm like that and dive with it pulled up their arm, yep. um, put it in a BCD pocket or just clip it on onto them like this. Um, underwater, it's really not so much of an issue. Yep. Um, so those might be things that you, you want, want to think about doing. Um, with the hard case ones, they're more in a BCD pocket and can be maybe a little bit harder to stow just because they're, they're quite an awkward size. So, so something that I think, um, I mean, obviously, I, putting dome port covers will typically be you'll get off the boat with the cover on, take the cover off before you get back on the boat. Um, and so you need to make sure that logistically when you go underwater, you have a clip or a means of attaching the, the, the cover to yourself while you're diving. As you mentioned pockets, Alex. With the hard dome port covers, actually, what I like to do is, is actually just to drill a hole in them. Um, and, yeah. and, and and then just put a bit of bungee through the hole um, and then I can clip that to myself and that, you know, I can clip it onto a D-ring or my BCD or whatever, just get it out of the way. So I, I guess the important thing really is to think a little bit about, you know, how you're going to manage the logistics. I've I've lost numerous, not numerous, that's not treasure. I've lost neoprene dome port covers because I put them on my arm, straight my arm and they floated off. So, so you know, it, it's something to think about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You should yeah. stop all that saluting underwater, I think. <laughs> but uh, but um, with, um, for me though, um, I think the other place to be really careful actually is in rinse tanks. Yeah. Rinse tanks, I think, are probably the most common place dome port scratches happen yeah. because someone comes out, you know, after they dive, they want to rinse their camera. They take their dome port cover off, put their camera in the rinse tank, go and do something. And someone else comes along and, and dunks something in and, and you get a scratch on your dome port. So that's somewhere to be really careful of. The, the routine that I use is whenever I buy or get a new dome port, I'll always buy two dome port covers with it. And this has lots of advantages. It, it first of all means that I can have a wet dome port cover and a dry dome port cover. 
typically this yellow one I, is, uh, I keep as the dry don't put cover. And then I have a, a black one that I use in the water. This one is less buoyant. And so it's easier to dive with. So I'll, I'll put this one on when I'm jumping in. Once yep. I'm in the water, take this off, stow it wherever I'm going to stow it. When I finish photography for the dive, whether that's right at the surface or maybe if it's on a safety stop, if there's nothing else to shoot, don't put cover goes on from that point, stays on, comes out the water, goes into the rinse tank with this on. I'll just pull it out a bit to make sure it's rinsed inside in the rinse tank. When it comes out of the rinse tank, this thing goes off. My dome port gets dried and the dry cover goes on. That way, when the camera then goes and sits on a camera table, goes to my hotel room, wherever, it's not dripping water everywhere out of all the neoprene. Mm. And then mm. when I come back down to the, you know, to go diving again, the wet one then goes back on the camera when I'm going back on the boat. And mm. this one stays on, on the resort or stays in the camera room, stays in my cabin or, or wherever. And I find that a really nice mechanism to work with. I, th I think you mentioned when you travel, you put them on back to front, do you? I actually put one yeah, on yeah, one side, I'll one on the other. So, yeah, so, so when I'm traveling, I'll put this one. I'll just show you quickly. It'll take me a second. Mm. Um, so I'll put the one of the dome port covers on this way around, yeah. and that protects the front of the dome port. And then I'll put the second cover on backwards. Front. Yeah. And what the backwards dome port does is it covers up the – it first of all makes sure that the whole housing is now completely Section. wrapped in neoprene. Yeah. These edges have got a little bit of extra neoprene. It's got two layers of neoprene. But also the back hole of the housing is now covered. covered so yeah. it also stops dust and things going inside. Yeah. And, you know, so it's very valuable. So it's, it's helping me when I'm traveling, helping me in the field. And yeah. I think that, that – and so I would recommend to anyone who's buying a dome put cover is actually buy two. And yeah. if you can get two in different colors like I have, it makes it even easier to remember Better. which one's which. Um, yeah. Or if you've got an old one and a new one, I would use the old one for the underwater part because it's got less buoyancy in, and then the new one, keep that nice and dry and, and keep it in good condition for putting on when it's dry. So, yeah, that's the way I kind of operate with my dome. When you've got very small uh, domes, um, like this one, um, then um, they don't make any such good hats. But but the, the generally the neoprene covers tend not – there's not a great deal for a neoprene cover to grab hold of here. So they tend mm -hmm. to not stay on terribly well. They tend not to be terribly effective. So certainly with – with smaller smaller dome ports, hard covers are probably better. Now, um, a lot of the time they actually ship with neoprene covers. Yeah, um, that's a really good point. But um, but you, you if you go onto the Pixel Forum, it's a good place. Or, or just often there are, are plumbing fittings or pipe fittings, um, drain pipe fittings that may well do the job as well. Sometimes sometimes hard covers are available. Um, you know you can buy a hard cover. Um, but equally, you know if you can't, there's 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 lots of quite good sources for for improvising them. And certainly, I think for smaller dome ports, this is a, this is probably a better option than the neoprene option. Um, that is a, it's a really good point. Is that not all dome port covers are created equally, and particularly mm. for small dome ports, mm. the neoprene covers often don't do a particularly good job of staying on, mm. and a cover that doesn't stay on is not going to give you good protection. No. And yeah, it's well worth hunting about, seeking advice from other people with that same dome port, what solution they've got to help protect their dome can make things a lot easier. Something else that comes back to me, it's a little bit, forgive me if this is a little bit out, out of out of sequence, but it, in the nature of the discussion, one of the other things I, I often see happen on, on liverboards and, and resorts is that the, the, the dive guides and the dive staff do a wonderful job. You know, you, the boat comes in, you surf through your dive, they take your camera off you. And generally what they will do is they will then put that camera into the dunk tank. Now that's fine. Um, you know, that's but the problem is that until you go and get it out the dunk tank, it stays in there. So one of the things you really need to be kind of, you know, you're, you're full of excitement. You've seen all these wonderful things. You come up after a dive and and you forget that your camera is now festering the dunk tank with other bits of gear potentially being dropped on top of it or whatever inadvertently. So so, you know, first thing you do once you get out of the water is go and find your camera and <laughs> and retrieve it from wherever it is and put it in a safe place and, and to prevent this from happening. Obviously, if you've got a port cover on it will help prevent damage to the port but certainly i see that quite often people kind of you know quarter of an hour later realize where's my camera and by that stage the damage could have been done um, inadvertently mm -hmm. yeah 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 and you do have the problem as well on everboards that often a lot of people decide to to go in without their covers on they mm -hmm. leave them on the boat they come back on the boat and the dive staff start putting covers on them but mm -hmm. they don't know whose cover is whose and it can often mean that they, some of them are fitted with the wrong size covers and things. Mm. And then you've got domes that are not particularly well protected because they've got a cover on that's completely wrong for them. Mm. So, yeah, I, I would say taking responsibility for all that is, is a really good place. Anyway, 
I imagine most people have tuned into this video not to hear us being wise after the event, yeah. um, but instead to, to how to deal with scratching a glass dome. Now, we've spoken before on Wet Pixel Live that if you scratch an acrylic dome port, you have the ability to polish that scratch out um, pretty well in the field. Um, I would say with, with a, a deep scratch in a glass dome port, you're not going to be able to ever polish that out, whatever gear you've got. A light scratch or maybe some discoloration you maybe can deal with, yep. um, but probably not in the field either. Um, because it's requiring a little bit of more specialist equipment. So the first thing I would say is a bit of good news is that if you do scratch a dome port, chances are you're not going to scratch it right in the middle. There's, it's going to be scratched slightly off center. And yeah. that can be, you know, that, you know, because just because just because of nature, you're very unlikely to scratch it right in the middle. So first of all, you can think about how that scratch is going to be affecting your particular pictures. Um, generally, the scratch in the dome is going to show up much more in the picture when you shoot into the light than when you shoot away with it. So, mm. for example, if it's a really bad scratch and it's really annoying you in every photo, maybe you need to shoot without the sun in the pictures too much for the remainder of that particular trip. Yeah. That will help things. If the scratch is off center, definitely put your dome port on so the scratch is in the lower half of the frame. Yeah. Typically, the lower half of the frame will be full of reef and busy subject matter. A scratch will not show up so much in that area as it will against blue water. Yep. But also by being in the lower part of the frame, it will also catch the light much less. Yep. And as a result, will show up much less. Yep. So you get a kind of a double benefit. So if it is scratched off center, definitely put the dome port on in a direction that keeps that in the bottom part of the, the, frame, the picture. Yep. Um, and most dome ports, you can mount either way up. and It's not going to affect them in any way. The um, the uh, sort of again a, 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 a get out of jail type idea as well um, is the in Lightroom itself when you import you can actually use the um, the dust um, feature and so you can actually basically allow it to correct automatically. Now it does what it does, you know. Sometimes it will get it right, sometimes it won't, but it will automatically correct the same error in each photograph. So you don't have to do it individually for each picture. You can run it through Lightroom as, as a pipeline, and it will add a correction. Now, it, depending on the nature of where the where the damage is, it, it will either do a good job or not. But but again, it may well mean that images are salvageable. You know that it's not going to affect. It's not going to ruin the whole thing. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I and I know people sort of you know, you know, and if you do get something really amazing, um, you know, you might want to then not correct it automatically and do it on in Photoshop. Yeah, I think also in terms of a competition, I would imagine if you did get an amazing picture and you had a bad dome port scratch in the picture, I would think most competitions would probably allow you to remove that scratch. Mm. Be, you know, so you know, just be, you know, so if you do happen to get that once in a life opportunity. Yeah. I would say that almost everyone everywhere would be, OK, we understand why you've had to clone that out. You're clearly not cloning out something that wasn't supposed to be there. You're dealing with an issue that yeah. you had in the optics. So, you know, again, you know, I don't think you need to get overly stressed about these things. So yeah. something that I sometimes carry with me um, is this glass polish. Yeah. Now, unlike polish for um, a acrylic dome port, this is not going to polish the dome glass away so that the scratch disappears. Yeah. What this will do is it will just get the glass dome into its best possible condition. This one here is called G4 Nanotech Glass Polish. But yeah. it, I would say it's more of a glass finisher than a mm. polish that's going to grind the glass away so that mm. the scratch goes away. Mm. Um, but it, it does say it's very good at removing hard bonded contaminants, absorbs oils and, and silicon, and doesn't scratch the glass. So therefore, it's not, it's not going to do anything. So something like that, what it can do is it can at least maybe minimize the edges of the, the scratch. And a lot of scratches in dome ports, once you're underwater, that scratch fills with water and mm. really doesn't show up anywhere near as much underwater as it does on land. So no. those are all good news things. Yeah, yeah. But I, the, oh. I think the other thing that happens with scratches is sometimes they do attract a kind of residue on the edge of the scratch, which mm. is which is very, very small. And by polishing, you get rid of that residue. So it reduces, you know, obviously, a smooth dome port, there's nothing to stick for, for, for salt or anything else to stick onto. Whereas mm. if you once you've got an irregularity in it, it can stick. And that, yeah, so mm. keeping it clean um, is, is really important. Yeah, mm. it, make, it certainly minimizes the effects. Mm. Yeah. And then when you're back from the trip, I think then it's the case of you, you've got to got to deal with these things. And for me, once you're back with the trip, generally, if you've got a bad scratch in your dome port, um, 
the only real solution with most of them is to buy a new dome port glass. Mm. And that will be expensive because, to be honest, the expensive part of most dome ports is the dome port glass, but it won't be as expensive as a whole new dome. Yeah. Somewhere like 60 ish percent of the price of a, of a, of a new dome will get you a new glass yeah. and you can either send the dome off to the manufacturer and they will fit it for you. There's a number of specialists that will, will do that and fit you a new glass um, and then you, you're ready to go. But it is quite, you know, it's obviously you're going to be paying at least 60% yeah. of the price of the original dome. So, on, on a um, big dome, yeah. Yeah. Well, well it's, uh, yeah, I think the, the price of the, the dome probably glass probably stays pretty consistent. Um, it is possible away from a trip to get glass polished and a light scratch, maybe you can have some success getting it polished out, but it's possible that the dome can fail during polishing. So mm. it's something that if you go down that route, go down it with very much eyes open that yes, this could do something, but it could not work as well. And right. you have to accept that your backup plan is always going to be buying another, your fallback position is buying another dome. Um, I actually recently had, well, during lockdown, um, sent my Nikonos RS 13 mil yep. back to Seacam um, for them to to do a, a polish and clean job on the front element. And I didn't have any scratches in it, but yep. I had a little bit of, of, of huffing up, of discoloration on the on the surface. Yep. And this wasn't able to remove that. And I sent it to Seacam and they gave it, took it apart and gave it a full grind down polish. And yep. it, no, it's now, I don't know how well it comes in the camera. But it now looks, looks very strong. clean, yeah. <laughs> it hasn't actually been diving since it's been polished yet yeah. because of, of rules and restrictions. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that a good workout. Certainly, um, we obviously we, we we chatted to to C Cam and to Harold and Esther mm -hmm. um, about the RS conversions recently um, on on Web to Live, um, and they have a tool that actually does allow them to to repair some scratches. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's a very unique case because that glass is basically irreplaceable. Well, it's not irreplaceable, but it's going to be very difficult to replace. Um, mm. So, so you know, it certainly makes sense that that would be one that you would always try and repair if you can. Whereas a more conventional dome, you know, the, the glass is available; it's not a less mm. less of a problem. But um, yeah. yeah, it um, might be worth a go at, at giving it a thing. But uh, yeah, be very aware that it could easily break. You could easily put a flat spot in it that creates big optical yeah. issues if you don't polish it well. Yeah. Um, and you may, and if it's a deep scratch, you probably have to take away too much glass and it will become weak. So yeah. I would be very aware of all, all those things that replacement glass is generally the, the, the way out. But if you're on a trip, don't panic. It really isn't usually the end of photography. I have scratched my dome ports plenty of times down the years. I remember on um, one year in the Red Sea at the end, I was running three Red Sea workshops and at the back to back. And at the end of week one, I left my camera without a dome port cover on the back deck of the boat. Um, I was busy dealing with everyone on the workshop. When I came back to the back deck of the boat, it had a massive scratch on my dome port. Yeah. Um, and I had two more weeks on that particular workshop. And yeah. at the time, I was very distraught. And that scratch, you could see in every photo from the rest of the trip. But it was easy to deal with in post. It really wasn't a yeah. big issue. I rotated it round. You know, when it was over the reef, you just didn't notice it. Yeah. And, you know, when it was on a clean, open background, yes, I had to clone it out. But it actually really wasn't that big an issue. Um, yeah. 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 I think it's uh, it's the shock of seeing that nasty mark on the lens, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, that's been wonderful. It's very useful discussion. Um, as you mentioned, I think probably most people probably have a look at it when they uh, when <laughs> when they've just had when a scratch. In yeah, when yeah. they're in need. Um, so so um, but um, obviously prevention is always better than cure. So um, so yeah. Um, good thing to do um, is to make sure you keep the covers on. Um, so thank you very much, Alex. Um, and um, thanks very much again to Nordicam for sponsoring this episode. Um, we, 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 we're very grateful to our sponsor for supporting what we do. Um, please feel free to add any comments or suggestions to the comments box and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.